Hey, Facebook friends and YouTube. Okay, and I'm going to make a video about money. I don't think I've done one about money yet, but this is a very important topic. I heard in a sermon once that Jesus talked more about money than he did about any other topic. So, this will be very important. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. That is a great verse. It's from Psalm 23. So, since God is our shepherd, Jesus, um, we should trust him to provide all that we need. And we should continually say that to ourselves. I think the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Meaning that we have all our needs met. And we shouldn't be wanting or craving anything. I love how uh, Joel Olstein says, if you needed it, you would have it. So that's a really good thing to say. It's true. Because God does promise to meet all our needs. And if we don't have it, we don't need it. Well, generally. So. Um, no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. That's good. So obviously, I mean, Jesus isn't saying don't work because Paul says, if a man will not work, he shall not eat. But you can work without serving money. The way you can tell is what do you think about the most? Do you think about God more or money more? And that's when you know who your master is. So... If you're really serving God as your master, then you're thinking about God all the time and what he wants. I think that's how you can tell the difference. Um, Whoever trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will thrive like a green leaf. So uh, if you trust in your money, you will fall. I love how there's this like little emoji on your phone. You can like try and find it, but it's like, a stack of dollar bills with wings and I think that's really funny because that's totally how it is like money just flies away and it's like where did it all go I don't know it's just like disappears <laughs> like all the time so but that's how it is and that's why we shouldn't trust in money because it just goes away and it's not like it stays forever I mean money is meant to be used you know we get money so we can get groceries or whatever so I love this passage. Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. <laughs> That's a very anti-Amazon verse right there. Although you can't order food and clothing on Amazon. Um, I got my girls' shoes and some good shirts on Amazon. And I did used to get like groceries on there, like crackers and stuff. So... Yes, so that should be the goal really for all of us, women and men, to just try and only buy food and clothing. So, yes. Um, people who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires. Foolish, like trying to play the lottery or gamble. Harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager, eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Which sounds a lot like losing salvation. Because what else does it mean that they wander from the faith and pierce themselves with many griefs? And then that would coincide with the parable of the ten virgins. That five had oil in their lamp and five didn't. And I think the five that didn't, that was probably the main thing that they focused on money more than walking in the spirit and being filled with the spirit and serving God. And that's why they ran out of oil because they were feeding the wrong thing. They were probably feeding their flesh rather than feeding the spirit. So yes, I think that's a good epiphany revelation there. Um, and then of course this passage is awesome. I know what it is to be in need, Paul says, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Amen. Praise God. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. And one way you can practice that is fasting. Um, there was one summer where I fasted every Wednesday, um, for like 24 hours, not to brag or anything, but it does help you with that to learn that you can be content and to realize, like, I'm not going to die if I don't eat, you know, because when we're hungry, we totally get that thought. Like, Satan gives us that thought, like, you're going to die if you don't eat. You have to eat right now. You know, and it's just like you feel like you have to serve your flesh, like, right away. <clears throat> but you don't. And so if you try fasting, it's a good way to practice saying no to your flesh and your stomach. 
And you got to treat it like an unruly two-year-old sometimes and be like, no, like you submit to me. You know, it's like that. Seriously, our, our stomach can be like a toddler, but we got to like, we got to treat it that it, we got to show it that it needs to submit to us, not us submit to it. Okay, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a fraction of a penny. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything all she had to live on. So I don't know if Jesus was really actually recommending this, but... Um, I know in the early church, it says in Acts that none of them considered any of their stuff to be their own, but they shared everything with everybody, which is like amazing. And you never really see that now, unfortunately, except for with my husband's parents. They've been really generous with us, like helping us out when we needed it. But generally, people are very selfish <laughs> and nobody really shares things for the most part. But anyways, this is the goal is that we should be generous and, um, and, and she was giving to the Lord. So it is important. Um, I've written about tithing a few times that, um, I don't know. I don't think that it's supposed to be a 10th because that was an old Testament covenant. We are now under grace, not under the law, but I do think we should give some. So, you know, I feel like 200 a month is good depending on what you make, but obviously it is good to give some if you're going to a church building because they have bills to pay, you know, and they have to pay their electricity and water bill and, and all that. And then also if you're getting childcare, it's like, you know, you should give some <laughs> if you're, if they're watching your kids, but I don't necessarily recommend a 10th because I feel like whenever we did try and do that in the past, it was like bad. And then we were like too broke. So Anyways, I would just say pray about it and ask God to guide you about that. And like in the Old Testament, Old Testament, primarily the tithe was for food. Like people would bring food to the temple and then that would feed the poor. So in a way, I feel like our taxes are like a tithe because we get 20 or 25 percent out taken out from our check. And that covers like welfare and building schools and stuff like that and like low income apartments. So in a way that's like tithing, what what tithing was in the Old Testament. So for a while I was thinking, well, our taxes pretty much is tithing, but regardless, if you do go to a church building, you should give some just to help them pay their bills. So those are my thoughts. Feel free to comment if you want your own thoughts about that. Um Okay, then Jesus said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. So, so piggybacking on that, in regards to that, like, you should, uh, you know, be wise about how you tithe, but then you don't want to, like, hold back just so that you can be selfish and buy a bunch of stuff that you probably won't even need. I mean, it's so common that we buy stuff or other people buy stuff for us and then we just throw it away. And it's like, what was the point of that? <laughs> so, you know, we don't want to just like spend our money on stupid stuff. So it is good to lay up treasures in heaven, invest in the kingdom. But there's other ways to do that besides money. You know, like me making these videos or whatever you can do, like giving meals to families that are needy or, you know. So there's other ways to lay up treasures in heaven. Um... Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Amen. Oh, this is really good. Joshua 1, eight. let this book of the law, uh, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night that you may be careful to do everything written out in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. So, if we follow God's laws, if we love our neighbor as ourselves, if we love our spouse and stay married, as you know, Jesus said, I hate divorce. And, you know, if we're faithful at our job and we're a hard worker, then we will be prosperous and successful. 
So, and then Joshua, this book of the law, I think it's just referring to the Ten Commandments. But uh, Jesus said all the commandments are summed up in loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself. So if you do that, then you will be prosperous and successful. And it's true. Like, I think I read once that the best CEOs are very sacrificial and loving and giving. And so obviously, if you're a CEO, you're prosperous and successful. And they get to the top because they actually care about people. And the best leaders are those who really care about their people. So that really is true. So anyways, I think that's good enough for now. This video is 10 minutes. So anyways, I pray that that blessed you all. And I pray that you learned something. And uh, God, I pray for anyone watching this that you will break any bonds that they have to loving money. Help them to think more about you than they do about money. But help them to also be wise and provide for their families. Um, but help them to mainly focus on you and to honor you with their money and to really pray about it. And I pray that whatever they do give, that they will be a cheerful giver because you want us to give cheerfully. So give us all wisdom about that and help us to not feel pressured to give more than we are able to so we aren't like totally broke. <laughs> and thank you, God, for your wisdom. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that guides us into all truth. In Jesus' name, amen. God loves you all. Have a great day.